dear all good morning and namaste today i shall be discussing on indications of translectomy surgical procedure for translectomy different methods of doing translectomy and its complications coming to indications of translectomy there are certain indications they are local indications systemic indications and as in approach to other surgeries let's come to local indications of translectomy Number one indication of translectomy worldwide is recurrent tonsillitis, which means paradise criteria. Paradise criteria is defined as more than seven episodes of tonsillitis in one year, or five episodes per year for two years, or three episodes per year for consecutive three years. This is basically designed for children having tonsillitis, in which condition the parents might lose the office and children might lose the school. And there might be chances of complications. Nowadays, patients having recurrent tonsillitis are less common because they seek the medical advice early. Second is after second attack of Quincy. I want to stress that Quincy is not very much recurrent. Quincy recurs in around twenty percent of the individuals. So if we operate on the first episode of Quincy, around eighty percent of patients will be operated for Quincy without any benefit. Therefore. We perform translectomy after a second attack of Quincy only. Third is intratonsillar abscess, which might lead to fever, halitosis, itch. Next one is malignant or benign tumor or unilateral tonsillar enlargement of suspicious cause. Therefore, we operate for biopsy purpose. Tonsillar enlargement with striator or dysphagia, especially in children. So you can perform translectomy when the child has big tonsils with striator. Or when the child occasionally develops sleep apnea at night time, tonsillar cyst or tonsillar cyst with halitosis is one of the indications for tonsillectomy. When the foreign body is impacted on the tonsil, it can be removed with instruments. We need to perform tonsillectomy. Out of them, recurrent tonsillitis is the most common indication for tonsillectomy. There are certain systemic indications for tonsillectomy, but nowadays they are not very common and. We don't perform tonsillectomy for these indications. They are rheumatic fever with arthritis when the child is having rheumatic fever, subacute bacterial endocarditis, glomerular nephritis, and diphtheria carrier are the common indications among the systemic diseases. But nowadays, tonsillectomy is rarely performed for this indication. Tonsillectomy can be carried out as an approach to other surgeries like steroid process excision in Eagles syndrome. The operation through the tonsils, glucophagal neurectomy, as uvulopalatal pharyngoplasty. The tonsil is to be removed along other structures in the palate, and branchial fistula excision. The opening of the branchial fistula lies on the tonsillar bed. Therefore, tonsils are to be removed while we are performing branchial fistula surgery. Let's come to certain contraindications for tonsillectomy. They are aged less than three years. There will be limited space in the oral pharynx. The child's mouth will be small. It is supposed that tonsils help in improving the immunity. Therefore, the child's immunity might decrease. The child might not tolerate more blood loss because the child's body has less blood in relation to the adult's blood. Minimal amount of blood loss in children might lead to complications. In children, when we perform tonsillectomy. The lingual tonsils might get hypertrophied. This happens in adults also, but when the lingual tonsils get hypertrophied, then child might have sleep apnea-like syndrome or difficulty in breathing. When there is acute infection or acute tonsillitis, tonsillectomy might be contraindicated as it leads to more bleeding, as we have already discussed in case of Quincy or Peyton's abscess. But it is not the absolute contraindication for surgery. Aneurysm of internal carotid artery or tonsillar artery is the absolute contraindication for tonsillectomy. While doing tonsillectomy, if we traumatize the internal carotid or tonsillar artery, there might be heavy bleeding. So this is the absolute contraindication for tonsillectomy. Bleeding disorders like hemophilia are the contraindication for tonsillectomy because patient might bleed after tonsillectomy. And when the child has cleft palate, it is wiser to not to perform the tonsillar surgery because it might lead to rhinolia aperta. Other relative contraindications like cervical spondylosis, which affects the surgical position, rose position, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, 
tuberculosis is female patients during menstrual cycle when they have vicarious menstruation, granular pharyngitis when we perform transliteration the infection might flare up and hemoglobin less than 10 gram per deciliter. It was the contraindication in the past because there used to be bleeding. But nowadays bleeding is very uncommon after transectomy. So we can perform transectomy even if the patient is having hemoglobin less than 10 gram per deciliter when there are certain indications. Now let's discuss about the different methods of transectomy. They can be classified as hot and cold methods. Cold methods are dissection and smear, microdebrider, harmonic scalpel, cryosurgery, cold knife resection, and Gilton method, which was used in the past but not nowadays. Even Gilton method is a history now. They are called cold methods because they don't use the heat for dissection. Hot methods like electrocautery, laser, coblation, and radio frequency produce heat. So that they are called hot methods of transectomy. Transectomy by dissection and snare technique is still commonly practiced in most of the centers, but nowadays we don't do this surgery. We usually do by bipolar electrocautery or by coblation method. Let's discuss the traditional method of transectomy by dissection and snare technique. What are the steps of dissection and snare techniques? They can be asked in the exam. Rose position is commonly asked question. The patient is kept in a supine position with extension of neck and atlanto-occipital joint. Rose position has certain advantage during translectomy. If there will be bleeding, the blood goes to the nasopharynx so that it is easy to suction out. Blood will not go towards the respiratory tract or towards the lower airway. There will be no aspiration. The next advantage of rose position is that we can have adequate surgical field in the oropharynx. They are the two common advantages of rose position. After that, Boil Davis mouth gag is inserted and fixed to the Draffin's bipod and McGuran's plate. Boil Davis mouth gag helps to open the mouth, so mouth has to be adequately opened. The complication of using Boil Davis mouth gag will be temporomandibular joint dislocation. For that, the surgeon has to look at the end of the surgery. When there is adequate surgical field, the incisions shall be made between the tonsil and the anterior pillar. The incision is also called as anterior pillar J-shaped submucosal incision because the incision is made in a J-shaped manner on the right side and on the left side it is made as inverted J. Now, the upper pole is identified and the tonsils are dissected from its base till its lower pole with the tonsillar dissector. A noteworthy point here is that the tonsils are dissected between the tonsillar capsule and the superior constrictor muscle, the area being called as the peritonsillar space. So if we perform dissection through peritonsillar space, there will be less amount of bleeding and there is a good surgical field will be created. I want to stress that in the upper portion of the tonsil or at the upper tonsillar pole, the peritonsillar space is wide enough and there is more of the loose areolar tissue so that we can make easy approach from superiorly to inferiorly. The tonsils are to be pulled medially and traction to be given with the help of tonsil dissector. You can use gauze piece at the area of dissection to decrease bleeding. The dissection goes from superiorly to inferiorly till the lower pole is raised. In the lower pole, there is a pedicle. The tonsil pedicle is snared with Ips tonsillar snare. The advantage of Ips tonsillar snare is it helps to cut and cross that helps to reduce the bleeding by activating the coagulation pathway. So there will be coagulation of the tissue or blood vessel leading to decreased bleeding. Simply using a blade or scissor to cut the lower pole might lead to bleeding. So there is a special advantage of Ips tonsillar snare. Nowadays we use electrocautery to remove the lower pedicle also. Now the tonsil is removed from the fossa and it is packed with HCO to soaked gauze for 5 minutes. Hydrogen peroxide helps to have the thermal cautery because it releases nascent oxygen and there will be heat formation in the tonsil fossa that leads to thermal cautery of the tonsil fossa leading to decreased bleeding or that helps to seal the small blood vessels which might bleed during tonsillectomy. The most common blood vessel that bleeds during tonsillectomy is the Paratonsillar vein followed by the tweaks of tonsillar artery. If there is any bleeder that is ligated with silk suture or characterized by bipolar cortis. So nowadays we don't 
ligate the blood vessels. We mostly use bipolar electrocautery. Let's describe the position. This is a rose position. This is a rose position. The, the neck is extended by keeping a sand back behind the shoulder blade and the head rests in the head ring. So the position will be fixed. Then we apply the boiled Davis mouth gag. This is boiled Davis mouth gag which is used to open the mouth. And this is Draffin's bipod and McGran spread is kept here. After the position is adequate, then we grasp the tonsils, basically the upper part, and the incision is made in the upper pole. You can see here, the, this is the dotted part makes the incision. This is called anterior pillar J-shaped submuxal incision. The incision is like a J, okay, through the anterior pillar and the upper pole. Now, the tonsil is open from here at the plica seminarianis. This is a fold of mucosa between the upper pole of tonsil and the anterior tonsil pillar. This is rose position. Neck is extended by a sandbag under the soldiers and is supported on a ring. I have already told this. Now you have to separate the upper pole of tonsil from the soft tissues. So this is the tonsil dissector and the pillar retractor. The tonsils are bluntly dissected from the tonsillar fossa. So this is the tonsil, this is tonsillar fossa and this is the peritonsillar space. So we always have to proceed through the peritonsillar space. This is more areolar in the upper tonsillar area towards the upper pole. So it is easy to make plane over here. So beginners always have to spend more time during this part of the surgery. You have to make an adequate plane of dissection to start the tonsillar dissection. So you won't leave the plane. If you leave the plane, there might be more bleeding or the, there will be difficulty to proceed towards the lower pole. Remember that the tonsils are grasped at the side of the upper pole, at the side of incision, wherever you are are going and dissection and they have to be retracted immediately. Now the dissection proceeds downward with cutting of the triangular ligament. Now once you reach the lower pole then you have to snare and remove the tonsil. So this is the tonsil snare. The pedicle is grasped with the tonsil snare and the tonsil is snared out. So it will help to cut and cross the tonsil lower pole. Therefore there will be no bleeding. This bipolar cautery which is being used here to control the bleeding vessel and this is the tie. Okay, silk suture being applied. We don't apply the silk suture nowadays. Now, once everything is cleaned, uh, then you keep dilute S2O2 in the fossa with the cotton soaked in the S2O2. Then keep for five minutes to control the hemostasis. Suctioning of the blood has to be performed from the nose. There are other different methods of performing tonsillectomy. As already told, they are micro debrider ultrasonic harmonic scalpel, cryosurgery, cold knife dissection, leads to much bleeding, and Wilton method as the hysterical method, and electrocautery. I usually perform tonsillectomies by electrocautery method, laser tonsillectomy, bipolar radio frequency ablation. The next important question to be asked in exam or in the practical is how do you do post-operative cure? The patient has to be kept in left lateral position with the head low. So if there is any bleeding, the patient can uh, either spit or we can suction the blood through the nose when the head is low. There will be less chance of expiration. The surgeon has to be informed immediately in case of fever above more than degree Fahrenheit, that is infection or sometimes reaction with fever, difficulty in breathing or swallowing. When there is blood in the oral cavity, then the patient might have difficulty in breathing or swallowing or excessive bleeding from the oral cavity or nose, there might be bleeding. Only problem after tonsillectomy most of the times is primary or reactionary or secondary hemorrhage. The patient is asked to eat soft foods and ice cream. Ice cream helps to decrease the bleeding because ice cream is cold. So cold helps to decrease the pain as well as to decrease bleeding. Patient is to be encouraged to swallow and gum chewing because there will be movement of the superior constrictor muscle that leads to decreased bleeding or the blood vessels might be contracted if the patient swallows. The patient is asked to drink plenty of cold fluids so that there will be no dehydration and it is better to avoid citrus fluid juice because there will be sour and the patient might have increasing pain or throat irritation when the patient takes citrus fluids. Now let's discuss the complications of tonsillectomy. Tonsillectomy is not free of complications. 
early complications happen within 24 hours of surgery. They can be classified as complications of surgery, injury to leap, teeth, uvula, pillars, soft palate, due to instrumentation, temporomandibular joint, dislocation is the common complication if we open the mouth much with the Bulldog's mouth gag. Hemorrhage might be primary during surgery or reactionary within 24 hours. Surgical lymphysema, when the surgeon is brave to tear the severe constrained muscle or tonsil remnant. Anesthetic complications like aspiration and cardiac arrest might be there. Aspiration is avoided with the help of throat packing during surgery. We use high volume, low pressure endotracheal tube and usually placed through the nose that is called as nasotracheal tube. Late complications are the complications which occur after 24 hours of surgery and they are surgical complications like secondary hemorrhage, basically due to infection, scarring of the soft palate leading to velophagia insufficiency when the child or when the person has bifid uvula or incomplete cleft palate or submucosal cleft, then you have to be careful to operate because that might lead to voice change after tonsillectomy. But the most important question to be asked by the patients is, will the patient develop voice problems after tonsillectomy? That is usually rare to have voice problems after tonsillectomy. But when the patient is having bifugula or submucosal cleft, then there might be some form of voice change. Lingual tonsil hypertrophy, especially in children, tonsil fossa infection, which is also a common cause of bleeding after tonsillectomy. The patient is asked to gargle three to four times a day with dilute hydrogen peroxide and povidone iodine solution to decrease the chance of fossa infection. So when the patient takes food, the patient has to gargle. Granular pharyngitis might be there as a complication of surgery because the lymphatics in the posterior pharyngeal wall can be enlarged after tonsillectomy. Late complications after anesthesia is lung collapse. With this, I want to complete the topic on tonsillectomy. Please don't forget to look the next part that is hemorrhage after tonsillectomy, which is the important complication of tonsillectomy and I shall be discussing about causes of hemorrhage and their management in the next topic. Thank you. Have a good day.